if I actually had a student that used ChatGPT, GPT, I would probably figure it out pretty quickly because it's probably written too well. <laughs> Thinking about education, does this cause you any concerns? Do you think that you're going to change anything in how you interact with students? Um, it, it honestly, for me, doesn't change anything that I've already been concerned about in terms of the capacity of students to find new ways to cheat uh, and pass stuff off. I mean, they can buy papers. There's lots of things they, they could do. It doesn't make it more accessible to some people because uh, chat GPT is free. So maybe it makes some things accessible. Um, you know, let me say this. I, I think there are some valuable things to it. I don't have a real problem. Like for example, I, I wrote a, bo a blog post uh, a few weeks ago and I pasted my post into chat GPT and said, chat GPT, give me five tweets that summarize this in different ways, including hashtags. It generated in about two seconds, a bunch of five different tweets with hashtags. And that became my social media marketing stuff. And it, Saved me a lot of effort of doing that and did a really good job. Uh, so yeah, there are some things it does pretty good. And so I do have things that I, I would be concerned about, but it also has some failures too, uh, in terms of what it can say. It doesn't understand because it does with common answers. It doesn't give the uncommon answers. So what it made me realize is that when I'm doing assignments and I'm thinking through uh, work, there's a thing in, in uh, education called Bloom's Taxonomy, which basically it's like lower order levels of learning versus higher level orders of learning. And so, for example, remembering something like a verse, memorizing a Bible verse, right? That would be uh, a, the lowest level of learning, uh, re memorizing an equation or something like that. But then it goes to like understanding, applying, uh, analyzing, evaluating, and then ultimately creating. So as you get higher on the learning expectations, those are things AI has less uh, capacity to do well. It really, when you start to quiz, I've typed in like, I've done dozens, maybe a hundred or so tests with different things. And when you start to do analyze, compare, contrast type questions, it usually messes up somewhere because it's dealing with popular answers but especially the Christian field, um, you know, uh, there's things and subtleties of theology and nuance that really it doesn't do a good job cheating on because it gives not very specific answers to maybe what my question is. So as a teacher, my goal is how can I ask questions and make assignments that tend towards those higher levels of Bloom taxonomy, like analyzing, evaluating, creating. So I try to make my assignments fit in those things. And then it's easier to spot when they might try to use an AI. So basically you're the professor out here who's blocking all of us from cheating. Or I mean, right. not even cheating, I'm sorry, wrong word. But from, you know, taking some of the easier routes when we already have so much on our plate. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You're welcome. Well, you know, I'll tell you what, Monique, here's the thing. Uh, I'm also not like, okay, I teach undergrad. Uh, I'm not generally, and I teach students across a wide spectrum of educational backgrounds. So I don't teach only theology students. Or So I have a lot of students, some don't write, some are in engineering classes. Uh, I was an engineer, so I can pick on engineers. Maybe they don't write so well or, uh, you know, uh, so I are one of them. So it's all right. Mm -hmm. Um so there are students that don't. So if I, if I actually had a student that used ChatGPT, GPT, I would probably figure it out pretty quickly because it's probably written too well. Uh, so there, I'd uh, probably figure it out pretty quickly because it was actually good writing. Just to say there's a couple areas of where you could modify assignments, but also a concern with that too in the education space. So my concern would be more not just students potentially cheating, which is a thing that can be, I think that can be worked around. My actually bigger concern is the use of like, say, predictive analytics to determine a student's academic future, what what will make this student successful, right? So it's like, remember those tests you took in high school? Oh, you should be in this career, or that career, and those sort of things. If we relied on AI for those sort of things based on, oh, based on the metrics of what's normative, this student, you know, uh, Jeff Swernick will never be good at math and science or something like that. But that doesn't allow for students to grow, mature. It's based off it's saying students, hey, this is your future based off AI. And if there's authority given to that, that doesn't allow for humanity to evolve and change as, and grow as individuals. I'd be really concerned about that if we used it for that sort of thing to you know, say, oh, you must take this course of education based off this 
set of predictions and stats and numbers because we're not a set of stats and numbers. We're human beings. So I think that would be dehumanizing and also lead to disaster. I, I would actually use chat GPT. I'd find creative ways to say, hey, go to chat B G GPT or some other thing. Um, use the technology to find some basic information. Ask it for, like I did for the definition of AI. What's the definition of AI? I thought that'd be a fun way to start it. But what they'd have to learn is how to verify the sources and then use that information uh, to synthesize in ways that I, the AI can't. Um, and so, you know, teaching them to use that as a source potentially to do some things, but also ChatGPT, GPT like invents resources. If you ask it, give me five sources about, you know, artificial intelligence and the author and books, it'll give it to you. But uh, I've had friends that have done the studies and they'll, they'll literally make up authors or assign the wrong author to the book, because again, it's based off of the consensus of things and some people write fiction and it doesn't know what it's right. It's just, it can end up being a mess. So it doesn't, that's make probably where I would land. You know, Joe's discussion there about how the, you, if you're using it for predictive purposes, one of the things that I've noticed about AI is that uh, what it needs to do is constrain the space where the AI is working because it tends to not do well out in the extremes you see that in your self-driving cars that where everything's flowing smoothly they do well when there's a new situation it doesn't handle well and so what you one of the things that you make ai work well is you narrow the parameters where it can go and so when you're dealing with people that's saying everybody's kind of got to behave the same as opposed to somebody may just think very differently and if AI is the mechanism by which we're evaluating or the only mechanism, we're going to limit, we're, we're going to exclude the value, or that's not the right way to say that. We're going to make it seem like certain people are less valuable because what they are or who they are, their personality doesn't fit in with that. And so we end up dehumanizing people and elevating the AI, if you will. And I think that's a big concern with AI. Oh!